Good morning. Welcome. Good to see you all here on this uh, middle of November Sunday. Uh, we will hear a little bit today, uh, as we will for the next coming weeks, about the end of days, the day, the day of judgment, the last day, all of these uh, uh, names for uh, that one day which is coming that we are waiting for. A few announcements this morning. Uh, Thanksgiving baskets. If you have a name of a family that is in uh, need or has had a tough year, maybe in need of a little cheer, uh, please give us their names. There's forms on either entrance. Uh, next week, we will be packing those Thanksgiving cheer baskets. We'll be delivering them. Uh, so our deadline to receive the names is today so that we can order uh, the supplies for that. Uh, our Thanksgiving Eve service is coming up on Wednesday, November 27th at 7 p.m. And there is a uh, pie social uh, or what have you, whatever dessert you'd like to bring, uh, we'll enjoy together after that. Um, today we're going to be blessing our uh, community uh, committee members, excuse me. So if you've served on any committees, if you've been appointed to stewardship committee or the uh, scholarship committee, or maybe you've uh, helped with the German supper, or you've helped with the uh, annual, annual auction, or there's some other happening within the church that hasn't fall, fall, uh, didn't fall into any of the other categories, today would be the day for you to come forward to receive a blessing. Next week, uh, communion assistants will receive a blessing. And finally, our last announcement uh, in the bulletin, you'll see that uh, nativity pageant help is needed, so if you're able to help out with that, uh, we are gearing and ramping up for that, and uh, you can talk to Jeff after worship if you would like to help with that. With that, uh, I invite you, as you are able, to please rise as together uh, we uh, worship our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is on page 518, Beautiful Savior.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Our first lesson comes to us today from Malachi 4, verses 1 through 6. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all the evildoers will be subtle. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the sun of the righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the teaching of my servant Moses, the statutes and ordinances that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Lo, I will send you the prophet Elijah before the great terrible day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of parents to their children and the heart of the children to their parents, so that I will not come and strike the land with a curse. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 98, and we will read it responsively. O sing the Lord, to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, O all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King of the Lords. Let the sea soar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Our second lesson comes today from 2 Thessalonians 3, verses 6 through 13. And we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from all believers who are living in idleness, and not according to the tradition that they receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you. We did not eat any more of anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have a right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work shall not eat. For we will hear from some of you that are living in the idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. first chapter. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. 
When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. And those in Judea must flee to the mountains, and those inside the city must leave it, and those out in the country must not enter it. For these are days of vengeance as a fulfillment of all that is written. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing infants in those days. For there will be great distress on the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be taken away as captives among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you understand what the day is that Malachi refers to in our reading? What day Jesus speaks of? In the gospel? Well, we don't spend a lot of time talking about it, at least in the Lutheran church, so let me explain. It is the day of judgment, or what we call often the last day. As we pray together in the Apostles' Creed, it is promised that Jesus will come again on the last day to judge the living and the dead. In the language of our Malachi text, on that day, all the arrogant and the evildoers will be stubble, or sometimes you hear it called chaff, to be burned up in the fiery oven burned to ashes to be trampled under your feet. Now this sounds terrifying. All the makings for a true fire and brimstone sermon. So what does it mean to be arrogant and an evildoer? Well, Luther is quite useful in helping us to understand that as it relates to the law that there are two types of arrogant people to whom the scriptures refer. The first are those who hear the law and they despise it. And they lead impossible.
pious lives without fear of consequences. <clears throat> to these people, God's law does not come. It does not place itself in their hearts. Instead, for such folks, they consider themselves a law unto themselves. They don't even think about the day of judgment. They have no concept of it, and it will catch them completely unaware. And these are the folks that we most often have in mind when we think of this text, that it will affect them, and perhaps some of us might say, and rightly so, they get what they deserve. Now the second type are those who attempt to fulfill the law by their own power rather than by God's grace. The law comes to them, but they cannot endure it. They therefore water down its demands and lead a life of hypocrisy, doing outward works of the law, thinking that this will save them, thinking to themselves and telling others that what Christianity means is being a good person. Of course, this is what the Buddhists, the Hindus, the secular humanists say as well. And so in sermons, what they would prefer <coughs> is to be given a laundry list of things that will earn them God's good pleasure. Then doing them, they can call themselves good people. They do not understand that the law makes it all to be sin where Christ is not the source and center. For the law shows that our ability counts for nothing while Christ's grace counts for everything. The law actually demands the impossible so that it might drive us to Christ, bringing us to the end of ourselves, to the end of our abilities, before the day of judgment, when it's too late. Now the type of arrogance referred to in both cases is self-reliance. Having confidence in one's own self rather than relying upon the help or the support of others. Another way of putting it would be to claim for yourself the title of being a self-made man. It brings to mind the song that Frank Sinatra popularized, I did it my way. That's the way the first type of people would put it, while the second type of people would say, I did it God's way. But both are navel gazers, right? It's all about the I, what I did. So to be arrogant means to chart one's own course, under one's own steam, to wherever one has chosen for him or herself, even the destination of heaven. Yet there is a third type of people who are also referred to in this passage, those who fear the name of the Lord. Now people can get jumpy when we speak of fearing the Lord, even though the first commandment, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me, means that we are to fear, love, and trust God above anything else. The manner in which we are to fear God is to show him all honor, all glory, all obedience, all awe, and all reverence. It is to confess the Lord as the ultimate authority over our lives and the right to judge us on the last day. It is to say, your name be hallowed. Your will 
be done. Your kingdom come, not mine, Lord. The fear of the Lord, as Proverbs tells us, is the beginning of wisdom. Now, this fear of the Lord is taught to us by God's word, which puts us to death and raises us up to new life in Christ. God's word, which comes to us in the form of the law, is meant to be a mirror that shows us not our righteousness, but our unrighteousness. Not our accomplishments, but our need for Christ. It shows us that we don't measure up. We haven't loved the Lord our God with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind and all our strength. And we haven't loved our neighbor as ourselves. Now, learning this about ourselves puts to death our old creature who trusts only in itself. Then, and only then, can the gospel raise up the new creature to live with Christ forever. Because the path to salvation is not, contrary to popular belief, one of getting better and better, but instead it is one of daily dying and being raised by Christ. God's law is meant to be a weight upon us that keeps the old creature in line while causing us to despair of our ability to save ourselves. This is why when the Son of Righteousness comes with healing in his wings, this is truly the good news. When the healing rays of this sun shines upon you, they won't make you tan, but instead they will make you righteous and free from your sins. These rays are the word of the gospel, which penetrate your heart and create faith in Jesus Christ alone. Now on the last day, Christ will gather you under his healing wings, providing you refuge from God's wrath and judgment, setting you free once and for all from the weight of your sin, from the fear of your death, and from the constant attack of the devil. Then, having been set free, you shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Now, have you ever seen a calf emerging from the stall, from the barn, in the spring when winter has passed? They frisk about and frolic, playful and carefree, so too for the chosen of the Lord who shall leap for joy, having received a clear conscience that shall never be burdened again. Having received also through Christ's healing wings a new resurrection body that can kick the walkers and the wheelchairs to the curb, that can throw aside the reading glasses, and then cartwheel before the Lord like King David. Knowing all this then, the last day becomes something not for us to fear, but something for us to look forward to. Look forward to basking in the sun of righteousness, to feeling its healing glow on our heads. As someone said during Bible study, like cats laying in the sun, soaking it up. We can bask our stiff joints and our sore muscles in his glow, and they will be loosened and rejuvenated, healed and restored. On that day, the sickness of sin is past. We will want to frolic in Christ's healing sunshine forever, and so we shall. Amen.
invite everyone to come forward who has served on a committee in this congregation to include those appointed by the council, all those who have helped with the German supper, the annual auction, all representatives for our outreach locally with the nativity pageant, St. John's, the National Day of Prayer, and everything else that isn't included any other week. Come on up. I know there's more of you out there. Come on up. I think people are shy. They're shy? She thinks they're shy. All right, well, more blessing for you folks then. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, baptized into the priesthood of Christ, we are all called to offer ourselves to the Lord of the Church for what he has done and continues to do for us. Christ died to take away our sin and rose from the grave to defeat the power of death. He has given us new life through baptism, granted us forgiveness, given us hope and joy in the proclamation of the gospel and gives us the bread of life and the cup of blessing in the Lord's Supper. In response to all of this, we are made new creatures who freely offer ourselves to Christ's service. You have been called by the Lord into the ministry of sharing the word of Christ through many means within this congregation. Through this ministry, you are called to shine the light of Christ into the darkness and to spread his hope and love to many. Let us pray. Loving God, you have entrusted us with the good news of your gospel. It is a privilege that we do not take lightly. Thank you for equipping each one of these, your beloved, with gifts for ministry. Thank you for their willingness to respond to your call to serve with gladness. Sustain them on the days when they are tired. Give them strength to serve your children with patience, mercy, and grace. And as they serve you, give them joy through glimpses of your kingdom in the faces of those whom they serve. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from Jesus Christ our Lord. As you serve our congregation, the community, and the world, our Lord make you joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Let us offer thanks to God by way of applause for these servants who have answered God's call to serve. Our worship resumes on page 64. I invite you to please rise as you are able, as together we declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Holy God, mighty Lord, hear your people as they pray, and grant to them all things needful 
and beneficial according to your gracious promise in Christ our Lord. Praise to you, O Lord, for you have done marvelous things and laid bare your arm to save your people. <laughs> Deliver your church from all her enemies and from those who battle against your word. Sustain us through the fear and trials of these latter days and raise up faithful pastors who will secure your people in faith through the ministry of your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy are you, O Lord, and mighty. You will judge the world with righteousness and your people with equity. Bless us with good and faithful leaders in government to serve your purposes, defend your people, punish the evildoer, and ensure all people receive justice. Make us especially mindful of those least able to defend themselves, especially the unborn. Raise up those who will serve the cause of peace among the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, you have given us rich and abundant promises and promise to be with us in all adversity and need. Be with those who cry to you in any need of body, mind, or soul and grant them grace sufficient for all their needs. Especially, we lift up Lawrence Filter, Bev Voiceman, Taya Beyer, and Tanya Hovland. Deliver them from illness according to your will, and grant them to rest upon the firm foundation of your grace and favor, to keep them through the days of their trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We worship you, O Lord, for all your loving kindness shown to us in Christ our Savior. Deliver us from fear as we witness the signs of the times and make sober judgment in the face of so many vexing concerns. Remind us that though the nations rage and the powers press against the church, this is our opportunity to give witness to the word that does not change and the mercy that is our only hope in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the gift of family, and we pray you to bless the homes in which your people dwell. Make them to be places of blessing and peace where your word is front and center, and the faith is preserved and passed on to children and grandchildren. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Welcoming, Lord, bring us to receive with thanksgiving and faith the most blessed food of Christ's flesh, flesh for the life of the world and his blood that cleanses us from all our sins. Bless us with unity of faith and harmony of doctrine and life. By this sacrament, equip us with all the gifts of the Spirit and bring to harvest the rich fruits of the Spirit in the lives of your people, both now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, blessed Lord, you have promised never to abandon us and always to provide all that we need for this day and for eternal life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, hear the prayers of your people and grant them all good things for your mercy's sake. To you, the eternal God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be glory now and forevermore. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
doing, what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come forth now as calves leaping from the stall to receive healing from the Son of Righteousness.
I invite you to please rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 